Hey, these boys got it done, man. EDC, what's up, baby? What's going on, man? Look, last year, the EDC first couple of years, man, I questioned him straight up. And y'all know that. It's on record. It's on video and all that. Because he talked about how he wanted to assemble a track team and all that. He was taking over as GM. He did some things differently. He did some things similar to Ozzy Newsom. But I questioned how much Eric DaCosta was really all in. With these Baltimore Ravens and how badly he really wanted to establish a winning team. Now, I know in 2021, he did a really good job then, but literally everybody got hurt. Um, then 2022, was like, oh, okay, but then 2023, last year, last season, that's when, that was, in my opinion, the best roster that Eric DaCosta had assembled. And he built a roster that was good enough to get to the Super Bowl. And he built a roster that was good enough to win the Super Bowl. However, well, y'all know the rest. But anyway... Um, after last season, big challenge for him was going to be, what do you do next? What do you do now? You have some key guys that could possibly leave. You got some key guys that could want to get paid. And one of those being Justin Matter BK. So Eric DaCosta, he was straight up. He said, look, this ain't liars luncheon. I'm being straight up with y'all. If we can't get a deal done with Justin Matter BK, I'm using the franchise tag. Straight up. I'm using the franchise tag. I don't care. Nobody's there. I'm using the franchise tag, and that'll be that. Hopefully, we get a deal done. If not, then y'all know what's coming. What happened? Boom, he got franchise tagged. And what was crazy about that? That was just like a couple days ago. That, yeah, that was this week. That was this week on Monday, right? Man, that wow, that's crazy. But anyway, with uh, Justin Matabike, what was crazy about that to me, and we talked about it, was the timing of it because they placed that franchise tag on him at like 1.15 p.m. The deadline wasn't for about another three hours. The deadline's at 4 p.m. They placed it at, on him at like 1.15 p.m. Well, it, it, was, it was announced at 1.15 p.m. So they probably placed it on him before that. But anyway, um, I was thinking, man, these dudes, they must be far. They must be far when it comes to talks, man. Because for the Ravens, y'all know Ravens like pushing everything to the deadline. And they put this franchise tag in way before the deadline. So I'm like, they, they must be way far apart. But thank goodness they had until July 15th. But Ravens said, oh, yeah, we ain't doing deadline stuff this year with Matter BK. We getting this thing done. So just a couple of days later, a couple of days later, they signed Justin Matter BK to this record-breaking deal. You know what? Let's, let's break it down. The Ravens, they signed Justin Matter BK to a four-year 98. <laughs> Woo! A four-year, $98 million deal with 75.5 mil in total guarantees and 53.5. Oh, I got to take my glasses off for this one because they, they might break looking at these numbers. Woo! All right, let's read it again. Ravens are signing franchise defensive tackle Justin Matter BK to a four-year, $98 million deal that includes $75.5 million in total guarantees and $53.5 million at signing per sources. They got it done. So if we break that down in basic terms, 98 mil, four-year deal, 24.5, wow. 24.5 mil per year. Now, something that's big with that, because this is already huge news. This is great news as well. But something that's big with that, this deal got done before Chris Jones' deal. Now, I never anticipated Justin Matter BK getting paid more than Chris Jones. I always thought that whatever Chris Jones got paid, that was going to be the highest. Whether he got paid before or after Justin Matter BK, whether he got paid before or after Christian Wilkins. I always thought and felt like Chris Jones' number, his was going to be the highest. So I wouldn't have looked at Chris Jones' deal as a benchmark deal. Like, oh, that's the one that they got to go off of. Now, I always thought that Matter BK was going to be lower because Chris Jones is more proven than Matter BK. Yeah, it's all about timing, but Chris Jones, he was going to get his because this, this is not his second time getting paid. This will be his third time getting paid. But and with Christian Wilkins, I, I felt the same way. I still felt like Chris Jones' deal was going to be higher. But now, it's definitely going to be higher because Matter BK getting 24.5 mil, oof. That's a beautiful thing. So, so shout out to um, Matt Abike getting it done. Adam Schefter said this. He said, Justin Matt Abike had 13 sacks this past season. When you really think about that, you sit down, sit back, and say that out loud. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. And real quick, before we continue, I forgot to tell you, we're so ha happy for Justin Matt Abike and happy for the Ravens getting this done. Make sure you subscribe to the channel in celebration. Subscribe to the channel in celebration and, and leave a like on the video. Right now, right now, as of today, 
we are sitting at 73,726 subscribers. So we are 274 subscribers away from 74,000. So we're getting close. So y'all subscribe to the channel. Spread the word. Get it out there. Um, but anyway, back to Matter Big Gay. Matter Beaks, Matter Bank. I'm going to start calling him Matter Bank because he's cashing in. But anyway, Justin Matter Big Gay had 13 sacks this past season, the most by a Ravens player in nine years. Wow. Nine years. This was 2023. Nine years before that is 2014. Is that Elvis Dumerville and the Terrell Suggs year? I believe it is. Don't quote me on that, though, but I believe that is that year. That was another year we should have won it all, man. Because 2014, that was Steve Smith's senior year. Yeah, Steve, we had Steve Smith's senior, Torrey Smith. We had Jacoby Joe. We, we, oh. But anyway, um, he also tied an NFL record by recording at least a half a sack in 11 consecutive games. That's hard to do. That, 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 that is hard to do. That's tough stuff right there. Tough stuff. Um, but shout out to the Ravens for getting the job done. Now, how this impacts the Ravens in a lot of different ways. But most important way, before, and I'm still waiting on the official number so we can have an accurate, clear-cut picture of what the Ravens got right now. Before, when the Baltimore Ravens, they franchise tag Justin Matabike, uh, they were a little less than 10 mil over the cap. So they had, they, they, it was like 9.92 mil over the cap that they were. Now they got them signed to a deal. So now they can work with the numbers a lot better. I'm not sure how much um, they have now. I'm not sure how much under the cap this puts them. I think we have to wait until the, uh, we, I think we have to wait until the, um, uh, the official numbers are, are on. The, 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 the website or whatever I know Brian McFarlane Ravens salary cap He gonna have us covered With all of that So once NFL up, Updates the numbers Once Ravens turn Those official numbers in Then uh, Today is Friday So Maybe by Sunday Definitely by Monday uh, I'm not sure If they're gonna take The weekend off The Ravens gonna be like Oh we got the We got the deal done Alright everybody We going for drinks Hey let's, get, let's pay for the drinks For those people At the end of the bar I ain't forget about that whole bar. But anyway Um We'll have those official numbers soon. Uh, Brian McFarlane, he will update all of us on Twitter. So when he does that, then we'll, of course, let all y'all know. But the Baltimore Ravens, them getting this done, the timing is great because had they kept Justin Matabike on the franchise tag, if they kept him on a franchise tag, then what could have possibly happened? They would have had to get to restructuring this person and that person and that person. And they still will do some restructures to get some more money. But this puts less pressure on them to have to get this guy to restructure, get that guy to restructure, make this guy redo his contract, make this guy rework his contract, cut him. Cuts are still coming, though. People still going to be released. Some will be released forever. Some may be brought back. So we'll see. In due time But the Baltimore Ravens This puts a lot less pressure on them To have to go through all these million different contracts To rework them to get some salary cap relief Because now that you got your guy under contract You should get a significant amount of salary cap relief Because before his cap number was $22.1 million Because again, all of that, all of that uh, The franchise tag goes right on the salary cap as is So his salary cap number His cap number was $22.1 mil Now I would expect that to go way significantly down. Not way, but significantly down from that. So Ravens should be in much better shape than they were a couple of hours ago, salary cap wise. But shout out to them for getting this done because they obviously wanted to get this thing done. And they, they get it done before the new league year starts officially on Wednesday at 4 p.m., I believe. But before then, starting on Monday at 12, I want to say. That's when teams can start their legal tampering period. And y'all know how that goes. I think it's one of the most annoying things ever. It's just, it's just such a waste to me. It's, it's, it's such a waste of time to me. A legal tampering period. We're going to let teams negotiate for two days. Let players and teams negotiate for two days. But deals can't be official. That, like, what's the point? Why not just open free agency up right then and there? But anyway, that, that's the NFL. So, uh, it is what it is. But we're happy that this is done. We're happy that this is official. Something else that's official, the Baltimore Ravens, they were awarded one, compens one compensatory pick, uh, a fourth rounder. So they get an additional draft pick this year, and that's because of their loss of guard Ben Powers. You know what's crazy? But this is a good thing, though. This is a good thing. I completely forgot about Ben Powers. Completely forgot about him. Completely forgot. He went to the Broncos. 
completely forgot about Ben Powers. But that's a good thing because that means that the guards, for the most part, were on the right side. Let's let's let John Simpson. You're loving that, but overall they took care of business. They 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 took care of business. But now <laughs> we need another guard. We need two guards because both our guards are free agents. But Ben Cleveland is about to be to the rescue. But anyway, anyway, uh, shout out to Justin Matabike. Shout out to the Baltimore Ravens for sealing the deal and getting it done before free agency starts. They can go into the weekend. Justin Matabike, he can go into the weekend. However, he's going to celebrate his new deal. Enjoy it. Congratulations. I know a lot of Ravens fans, because there was a lot of conversation over the past couple of days. Ever since that franchise tag was first applied, a lot of conversation amongst Ravens fans. Hmm. I, I certainly take those two first round picks. And look, I ain't mad at nobody who said that. I get it. Y'all thinking business. I get it. Y'all thinking business. Y'all thinking the money, the salary cap, and whatnot. But now all that is officially out the window. Justin Matabike is here to stay. And now he can just continue his growth as a player. The Baltimore Ravens obviously saw something in Justin Matabike. They saw something in him last year. And they were like, huh, this guy's special. Let's try to get a deal done with him because we feel like he might go off. And he did just that. And this certainly worked out for him in a big way. Had he signed last year, maybe his deal may have been half of this. And that's not even an over-exaggeration. His deal might have been half of this. Because he was just simply unproven and he hadn't really played too much. He had looked good when he did play, but he didn't have that much experience. So Ravens could have got him probably half the price if he would have signed on that dotted line last year. But him and his team, his agent, his people, they said, nope, we ain't signing that. And <laughs> look where they are right now. Timing is everything, and it continues to be and will always be. Matabike got his bread. Ravens keep their player. And EDC, EDC, he called Justin Matabike a cornerstone player. Let's read uh, the, what, what Eric DeCasa had to say about Justin Matabike. He said, it. Uh, we are pleased to announce a four-year extension with Justin Matabike. Justin is one of the best defensive tackles in the entire NFL and a cornerstone on our defense. We are thrilled for Justin and his family, equally happy and equally happy for our fan base. This is a great way to start the new league year. Oh, he slipped that in there. Slipped that in there. Yeah, it is a great way to start the new league year. Um, but it's, it's great. And when he talked about a cornerstone, now you think about that. You have special players on every single level of this defense, and that's what makes the defense go round. On a defensive line up front, you got Justin Matabike. At the linebacker, you got Roquan Smith. Then in the secondary, you got Super Duper Kyle. And those three guys are going to continue to be relied on heavily. You got other great players uh, on the Baltimore Ravens. You got other really good players on the Baltimore Ravens, but he talked about cornerstone players. Those three right there, they are going to be taking the Ravens into the next five, six years. Could be longer, could possibly be shorter. But those guys are, like he said, cornerstone defensive players. So we'll see how this thing shakes out. But I am so glad. We are all so glad that Eric DeCosta and these Baltimore Ravens, they got the deal done.